Hello everybody and welcome to episode 13 of my tutorial series for Dyson Sphere Program. I'm Icon and today we are going to set up the real mall, so to call it. We're leaving the starter base and we're going to talk about proliferators today. So that's the topics that I've set up there. So first off, let me show you what I did in between the episodes. I have set up a little bit of something here, nothing too special. We have now an automated production of interstellar logistics stations. It has been quite the pain to set that up because I have minimal production amounts of everything, basically. We are importing those maglev drives from really, really far away, but that's okay. I don't mind a slow production at this point. And what really does matter for us is that we are producing after all, and that's working out quite nicely. So I have here already a nice and uh, big stack of interstellar logistics stations. We are producing other other things as well. All we need to do now is we have to sit up and wait until the things are produced there. So you can also, if you are on a low amount of resource here, do such tricks like here. For example, I'll take the particle traps here out there and slap them in there. And now we're producing again. I don't need that many interplanetary uh, stations anymore. There is even one here in the output. That means here we are saturated. We got an entire stack in the container. We already got one of these bad boys here in the output. That means all further production will be stored. And that's good. That's exactly what I want. Because I want to start out with with the planetary production poles here for, for now. Or the planetary logistics stations, I should rather say. I want two of them for today. Or, well, I don't know. One of them is okay. I have that many logistics drones I want to use, but as a matter of fact, once you are able to chain produce the interstellar logistics stations, by all means, just uh, just use them. Oh, I, I'm i dumb. I can use the small logistics drones also in the big poles, so never mind me. We just uh, yoinked out that thing, and what I wanted to do was to automate my yellow science production and give you that awesome view on that gas giant. Isn't it gorgeous? This game has really some some eye candy for itself. I like that. Given the cheap price of the game, I'm time and time again astonished about what the folks there deliver. Okay, so here, automate that. We want to set up this, and I really, really do that real quick, so you can see how, how cool these things actually are. We're just going to slap down the planetary logistics station here. Boom. And this time we're going to set up titanium ingot. And here I'm going to reduce the maximum amount to a very small uh, 300. It's really important for me because I really don't want my entire stack from the interplanetary thingy get dumped in here where it's just sitting around and uh, doing nothing. No, no. We just want to have enough energy to get uh, enough uh, titanium to keep this thing here running and keep the rest of the supplies somewhere else where they are needed more. Okay, so we are... I hope that will work. There we go. And now these guys are going to pick up the stuff and our production is automated again. I love these things. They are so hard to produce. It's such a pain to get there. But once you are there, you don't want to play without them anymore because they make long distance transportation so damn useful. Okay, proliferators, let's get going. So the first thing we need before we can go for proliferating anything is we need a coal deposit. Here we go, let's take that here. Down by the yellow sparkly cubes. Proliferators are materials that boost up your production, and they are awesome. I love that stuff. So we're going to do this like that. Ah, oh, why am I picking that up? Don't mind me. Started out a Factorio run recently, and I still have the urge to set up things again. So, uh... Somebody told me here a neat little trick that I didn't know. You can also hold down shift and use the arrow keys to rotate instead of shift R. I, I somehow got very, very used to shift R and I have a lot of trouble getting that out of my system. 
but if you aren't as me, bound to old habits, it's worth it. Okay, nice. So we have now lots of coal. So here we got another cool thing that we can hold down shift here or wait a sec. So where was that? Somebody told me that. Oh well. I need to re uh, re uh, read that uh, comment. So. Ah, yeah, when you press R, you get a, uh, here, that's it. If you press R here, I have got it now, you get this, uh, connection that is no longer snapping to the grid. But I wanted to try that if this is resolving these nasty curvature problems, but it's not. So whoever pointed that out in the comments, thanks for showing that. So if you ever want to have a non-linear path, that's how you do it, but it doesn't, uh, really oh it does kill them ah thanks so that's how you kill nasty curvature so thanks to whoever pointed that out really helps cool stuff well let's keep going although at this point it ain't really important but if it ever really uh, bothers you that's a way how to deal with it just Press R and twiddle around until it's no longer misbehaving. I'm really, really grateful for you guys sharing that many little uh, things in the comment section. I know that I'm a little bit clunky here and there with things, but it's really, really helpful. And this series will have a rerun as soon as the game is finished at, uh, at the latest point, so you guys are massively improving the future quality. I like that, and I appreciate that. So we got now the necessary miners. Let's produce that stuff. So proliferators produce more of an item, or speed up the production of an item, and that's why this stuff is so awesome. To produce proliferator, we will need coal, as you might have already assumed. So proliferator mark one is made out of coal, and Proliferator Mark II is made out of Proliferator Mark I and a diamond. So it's all coal. And there is another next tier, the Mark III one, is Mark II with Carbon Nanotube. And, you know, Carbon Nanotube is even more coal with a little bit of titanium, though. But you get the idea. What this means is we are going to need, first off, Bit of the production there so let's set up everything we need first off this guy let's check out the recipe the proliferator recipe is extremely simple and uh, very easily done so we are producing two units of proliferator per second and we eat two units of coal per second so this is a very very hungry recipe you will also need a lot of uh, inserter power uh, sorter power i'm sorry to get that done so we are okay with the mark ii though all right we don't need more than that so we're going to set this up now like three of these assemblers are going to eat the entire are going to eat the entire production of the mines here and that's what i want so Let's set that up. That also means we have a production of six units of Mark I Proliferator. Beautiful. I'll show you how it all is, uh, how you process the Proliferator in a sec, don't you worry. So now we're going to use the other coal mine here to produce diamonds. So let's check out the other recipe here. So we're going to set up the, the assembler here, probably, I don't know. Maybe it'll wander off to the other side. So, we are going to produce... We're going to use up two units of proliferator per second. And produce only one proliferator mark two per second. And we are also going to use up one diamond per second. That's okay, though. 
but we need that times three. So we are going to need three diamonds per second. That's actually quite a lot of coal. So let's check out the diamond recipe. That was uh, carbon uh, energetic graphite rods and I bet that we are not able to produce enough diamonds out of this one coal mine. Whatever. It just serves the demonstrational issues. So as a matter of fact, we do. We do. We are producing... Oh no, we don't. Yeah, well, okay. So we are able to produce three units of energetic graphite out of that mine here. And three units of energetic graphite are yielding us... Give me a sec. So I'll need... Two of these guys for... So each of these guys produces half of these, but only consumes half of these as well, so... It's actually working out. I have no, uh... No mess up in my thoughts here, but we are going to set up... Like, six of the furnaces, producing... Three energetic graphite, eating six... Yeah, it should work. Okay, so let's uh, roll that up here. So we are going to need the product on this side, so let's start with this one here. Of course we could already use the Mark 1 proliferator here to power up what we're doing here, so I just don't want to get ahead of things. Now we're only talking about how to produce the proliferators. How to use them we're going to discuss in a moment. But the fun thing about Proliferator is, you can literally use that stuff to power up the production of itself. We'll, we'll showcase that on another occasion, huh? Okay, so let's do this like that, power it up. And then we only need to make diamonds out of that. I really gotta recalculate that, though. I somehow have a feeling as if I am wrong about something, but somehow... Not really. So, we are... yeah. But it is as it is. We are producing one diamond per second with one energetic graphic per second if we slap up two machines. I don't see any fault in my thoughts. Wonderful. Okay, but we're going to need six of these guys here, so I'm a little bit afraid that it might not be enough room, but we'll work something out then. Three, four, five, yeah, just like I thought, but ah, we can't fit in number six there. Awesome. Okay, so as you see here, proliferator production easily eats up your entire... It's actually useful lots. It's eating up an entire uh, mine easily. So, there's that. There we go. Wonderful. And here I was able to press R when I connected there to uh, eliminate the curvature. It's really somehow hard to explain how it actually works, but. As soon as you have it under your cursor, you'll surely understand what uh, what, is what this is trying to do. Okay, so we got the diamonds, and now we are going to need three of these machines, and then we have three units of proliferator per second. Huzzah! So that's how you produce that stuff. The, the very high-tier uh, version of that needs even more materials, as you saw there. But I really would say it's very, very worth it. Worth it, And I'd even go that far that I should have used it a while ago already. That's my personal opinion. But 
Well, it's also micromanagement and it also increases the cost. Not only do you need to set up the proliferator itself, the material and all, it also requires higher power consumption of the machines that use proliferated goods. So that's making any sense. The, the English of this game is uh, some sometimes quite debatable. Okay, so we have that green goo now here. And we're going to use the planetary logistics station here for that matter now. And we're just going to transport that stuff planetary this way. That's why I wanted to set up a larger facility. Because I want to use that stuff now in a larger in a larger scale, you know. So go. And now we have the real production of that stuff. We set that up that it's accepted now, and it's supply. Exactly. This has to be configured as supply, and then everything will work out as intended. So now all the proliferator being uh, transported in here is going to be available for all the other parts of the planet. Wonderful. So I got one planetary logistics station in my pocket. So let's get on over and start mining somewhere so we can see that thing in action. Okay, how about... wait a second. How about checking out if I have all the necessary machines first? <laughs> That's always helpful. Yeah, and uh, miners... yeah, okay. So now our next goal is we really need to acquire the materials of this planet. And we need to find an open space where we can build our stuff up. Preferably somewhere where there's no mineral veins, like here. This is going to be where I build up my wall. I will need to build up a lot of foundation here to cover up the water, but whatever. It doesn't matter. That's a wonderful spot because there's literally no mineral veins in the, in the vicinity there. We could also go down here. It doesn't really matter. The real bummer here is the water, but the water is literally everywhere. We could also go here, but whatever. It doesn't really matter. I think just that this spot over here is great for setting up something new. And once we are done with the ball, we are going to set up the lab, the real lab, the one which research, uh, which will research a ton. So let's go down here. There's a nice big iron deposit there, and we might want to acquire it. So another thing that I had on my mind was... Yeah, well, this is the first thing that I want to mass produce in the new, in the new uh, ball. We want to have these uh, Mark II conveyor belts as quick as possible. I'm just showcasing these because of one reason. I think it would have been worth to acquire them a tad bit earlier already. But due to this tutorial being as it is, I really end up being sidetracked a lot because I explain that much, you know. So it's really something that I really feel you could have done a lot earlier already. Just wanted to mention that. Okay. So we are doing the same shtick as usual. We are going to acquire that iron here. So at this place, we are not going to extract the iron exclusively. No, no. What I am going to do here is I'm going to refine the iron here as much as possible. We have three deposits, so it's quite easy. We'll dedicate one to iron ingots, one to steel, and one to magnets. Easy. Because that's going to help us out a, a really, really a ton. Okay, so we are going to use for this purpose a interplanetary logistics station because it has more slots. The thing about planetary logistics stations is they only provide one slot and, you know, ah, one slot, three slots, of course. <laughs> and that's sometimes just not cutting, you know. So let's drop on in another of these planetary guys. I'd personally say it's up to you to decide which one you prefer, the planetary or the interplanetary. I would always make that dependent on the actual need in the situation, you know. If I only would like to export two or three goods, there's no reason to slap in the big boy, because these guys need more power and need more material to be built after all. You should always respect that. Because, you know, waste not what not. So we are going to do as follows, and that's the major reason why I wanted to have the interplanetary one. 
because I want to do a little bit of a nice trick that I feel like is extremely worthwhile. So we are not only going to use this uh, thing here for distributing metal objects all over the planet now, we are also going to use this thing as a hub for our iron ore. We are only going to uh, go for storage here. So remote storage, yeah, I think that should be okay. So this is really exclusively for storage purposes. And if we'd had better belts here already, we could make that a bit more compact, but we're, we, we don't, so we're not making it compact. We're going to make it wasty, but whatever. So now we're going to insert all these guys there. You could also use a planetary one as just a huge glorified storage depot. I do like these guys out of one particular reason. They have access to belts. They insert and uh, exit stuff at a... Uh, or, or they transport stuff in and out at a much faster pace than it's it can be done via sorters and it doesn't need power. Basically, this thing, you know, even while not powered up, it is already acting as a uh, distribution hub. We can use that. It's really useful. Just saying. We are going to make one thing, though. Just notice that. I'd be unifying these on one belt, if I have the Mark II belts already. But we can't transport that many pieces of ore per second, so I'm making it like best I can do for now. So now we are going to connect these guys just like uh, this, all of them. And here we got to check out if we have enough connectors or not on the, on the, uh, the, on the logistics station. And if we don't have enough, I really won't care and just slap on another of these bad boys up there because you know, Never shy away from going megalomaniac, and never shy away from doing some overkill, because there's no kill like an overkill. Jokes aside, it's just like, if you need it, if you, if you put a, if you see a good purpose behind the overkill method, if you really feel like, man, it's really cutting the job, even if it's too much, who cares? It's a sandbox game. All in all, I keep saying that, but I really like to repeat this like a mantra here in this uh, particular sense. Don't uh, get caught up with your inner perfectionist. Perfectionism is okay, as long as it is fun. As soon as perfectionism stops being fun, it sucks out the fun out of your game. And that's bad. You could also say it sucks, but I feel like that would be too much of it. But let's do one thing, though. Let's have fun with that. I'll just uh, connect two mining machines with each other because, you know, basically every mining machine should be used together with another, uh, with the output of another mining machine out of a simple reason because two mining machines can pack up one Mark I belt full really decently, just as a rule of thumb. And now we have it uh, all wired up decently. I just want to save on those connectors on the on the logistics station there, you know. So let's change something here. We're going to make it like that. And as you see here, I don't want to make this unnecessarily complicated here. So now we have the input of those. And this thing is now storing lots and lots of iron ore, but this will all be fine in a second. And once we are done with that one, you are going to see how the proliferators work, and we are also going to use this kind of like as, an as a template for all further operations, because, you know, that's going to be a real, real big deal now. Because 
as a matter of fact, in this at this stage of the game, prepare to face one fact. You will need lots of resources. Oh, that's a bad one. And I I really don't want to over exaggerate or anything, but seriously, the numbers of everything you need are insane in this game. Stuff scales up really nastily, and uh, you you're better off with with scaling up as well. So I'm depleting energy here, so let's burn some stuff. But I need I need something. I need to pick up something. All right, we are going to uh, pick up the last mining stuff there as well, and we are going. I just want to show you what I have in what I have in my mind now. So we are going to set this up like that now. We are going to put the proliferator on local demand. So they'll grab some of that for us. And now we'll have to uh, add in a spray coder. So here's the spray coder. The spray coder is the machine that you use to get the proliferator going. And here's going to be the proliferator. I'll put that on a splitter because we're going to spread the proliferator on this one. And now we're going to connect that. And the proliferator works like that. It has one entry at the bottom side. The bottom side entrance is meant to... Well, is meant for the product that you want to get there. That you want to spray coat. And it has a top side entrance. Which is meant to insert the proliferator in there. So you go that way. That, and now it fills up. All right, and we're going to oops, pick up some power pole there. The prolifer the spray coder needs the power supply too. And now we are going to connect this up. I did this on purpose to not exit anything, so we're now configuring it to to spit out the iron ore. And now what this does is, it's spray coating our iron ore, just like that. And you see, this stuff now has these uh, arrows here on it, and it has now the proliferator effect on it. The proliferator will now be spray coating everything that runs through here, Boom. just like that. And now we, ha we are getting to set up the furnaces, just business as usual. I want to set them up over here though. And now we get on over to the iron ingot recipe. And now you get to select whether the spray coated goods should provide extra products or be produced faster. That's up to you. So proliferating items can either give you extra production or a faster production. In this scenario, I want the I want the extra production. And it's really important to note that when you use proliferators and spray coders, this does increase the power consumption of the involved machine. So that means we get now extra iron plate, 20% out of that, but at the cost of using more power as well. So I'll show you in a sec. So we set that up as usual. And the neat thing about that is it doesn't really change anything, except for the fact that we are now producing 20% more, so we can just keep it with five smelters and fill up the belt with that. But we could that, but I don't want to, because I do plan to upgrade my, my infrastructure ASAP, because upgrading is another topic that I want to put up in the tutorial series, like how do you upgrade the facility from Mark 1 to Mark 2 stuff? Really important. And therefore, we're going to go over it because you really, you really ought to modernize your stuff from time to time. And here we go now. So as you see here, these machines consume seventy percent more. That's really a heavy bump up. So 
proliferating is only feasible when you have a strong power supply. But apart from that, we are getting more out of our iron than the other way around, and therefore I really, really find it extremely appealing to use that. Because it really does amp up your output by a lot. It makes your factory more efficient. You can also speed up processes, which is extremely powerful as well. Because, you know, if you speed up things, that also means that you are allowed to produce more of something in a shorter period of time, which is always cool. So, we can't go there, huh? Okay. Err. Just don't want to uh, destroy the uh, splitter here. Always keep a little bit of uh, maneuvering room around your splitter. Oh no, I'm out of power. Always keep a little bit of maneuvering room around your splitter. That's extremely important. And now we put the iron ingots here on local supply and remote supply. This way, we'll have now an iron production that's just going to be available for the rest of the planet. Isn't that awesome? And that's going to be where we'll end it for today. Basically, this is how I love to set up mining outposts. I do love to go down the way that I actually do it at, like here, to refine it on site so I don't transport the ore around, rather than uh, transporting the finished product around. It's up to you, though. You could also transport around the... only the ores. I really can't say that there is a proper or best way to do it. The best way is the design that makes you happy. The best way is the one, is the way that you really, that, that you enjoy to play. And therefore, I'll leave it like that. Okay, guys, so we've had that. Oh, of course, there is now a lot more to do. But before I end this, I wanted to show the case one thing. We have now six more exits on this beast where we can spit out iron ore. And we have also... Well, okay, you have to see it. it's more like three. You always have to think you need to one, have one output and one input. We output iron and we input the uh, final product. But at the end of the day, we can now still use this hub for three more products. That's more products than this thing actually can have. And therefore, it's really cool. We can, we can easily plug in this uh, iron deposit here too. As we can see, we have enough exits for that. And if you ever run into the problem that if you want to do it like I do here, that you're running out of ports, so to say, so these connectors, you can just slap in another of these domes and transport the stuff from A to B. You can basically use one interstellar logistics station to soak up all the iron and then use only a couple of them of the strands to transport it to another one where you do the real distribution. There's a lot of different things that you can do. Use your fantasy, use your uh, imagination for that. It's really worth it. And there's another thing I want to do here. I want to limit the amount of uh, proliferator here. Really limit the amount of stuff that is not necessary on the site because it'll drain your production otherwise. Because this thing, this doesn't need that much proliferator. I don't think so. Let's keep it at 500 before because I feel generous today. Okay, that's that. I thank you guys so much for watching. I am dropping it right there. For the next episode, we're going to talk a little bit more about the real mall setup. I have spoken a lot about mining outpost setups more than I actually thought and proliferating. And, well, what's necessary now is that we prepare the materials and haul them over to this place. But I'm not going to prepare too much in between these episodes because I feel like it's pretty important to showcase these things as they are. The only thing that I am going to do is I'll take the freedom to set up the rest of this iron refining outpost because, you know... You got, the, you, you got the idea already. We're just going to finish that and make that happen for steel and the rest. One last word about proliferation to sum it up. It's really awesome. It's really, really powerful. But it also amps up the energy consumption extremely. And therefore, be careful if you can't afford it or not. One last word of advice. Consider using the Tier 1 proliferators as well. Because they are really cheap 
only costs coal and they bump up the energy production by only 30% which is a lot more moderate than the other one around and than the other thing so thanks for watching drop me your comments down below leave me your thumbs up if you enjoyed and consider subscribing i'd be delighted to have you see you soon bye bye